Today is Friday, August 18th. We have updates about the major storm heading for Southern California as soon as this weekend. It could be the first tropical storm to make landfall there since the 1930s. And a first-of-its-kind meeting at the presidential retreat at Camp David. Which leaders will be there and why it's considered a big deal. Plus, which arm you get your next vaccine in might matter more than we realized. The Snapchat glitch that had some people creeped out or even looking how to delete the app. And we'll tell you which tune seems to be the top song of the summer this year. Those stories and even more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. What is now Hurricane Hillary is barreling toward California and other parts of the Southwest. As of this morning, it looks like the storm will weaken before making landfall in the U.S. But if it makes landfall in California, even as a tropical storm, it would be the first to do so in nearly 84 years. Then it's likely to bring significant rain, flooding, and wind strong enough to snap trees, down power lines, and cause a lot of property damage in parts of California, Nevada, and Arizona. That said, meteorologists warn there's a wide range of possibilities with the storm, since even the slightest shift in the hurricane's track could change the forecast drastically. For now, it looks like the worst impacts are said to arrive in Southern California Sunday night into Monday morning. Other parts of the Southwest could start getting rain even sooner. One good thing about this storm, it could help bring a significant cool down to the Southwest this weekend. Temperatures in some areas could drop as much as 20 degrees. In fact, Phoenix may not reach a high temperature in the triple digits for the first time since the middle of June. Authorities in Hawaii are facing growing scrutiny over how they prepared and responded to catastrophic wildfires. And now the state says it's going to hire an outside investigator to do an independent, impartial review. For now, it's not a criminal investigation. Hawaii's Governor Josh Green says the most important thing is to find out how officials can make sure it's safe as hurricane season continues and the fire risk remains high. Maui's emergency management agency has been facing some of the harshest criticism for not activating warning sirens when the fires broke out. And just one day after the head of that agency defended the decision, he resigned, citing health reasons. He's already off the job and officials say they'll replace him soon. All the while, crews are still sifting through the ashes of what used to be homes, businesses, and historic landmarks. Most of the burn zone actually still needs to be searched, and hundreds of people are still considered missing. So far, officials have confirmed at least 111 people were killed in the fires. Fifteen other states have sent in assistance to help with the search, and that's expected to last at least another week. By the way, another dangerous wildfire is forcing tens of thousands of people out of their homes right now. This one is burning in the capital of Canada's Northwest Territories, and it's so large it can actually be seen from space. As of this morning, people are facing huge traffic jams as they try to get to safety before fire gets to the escape routes. Dozens of flights are also taking people out of the danger zone. Canada has seen a record number of wildfires this year, though this is by far the largest evacuation effort. Law enforcement in Georgia have had their hands full ever since former President Trump was indicted earlier this week. Not only are they preparing for upcoming court dates, but they're now having to investigate a series of threats against the grand jurors. Georgia law actually requires jurors' names to be listed on indictments. That wasn't the case in Trump's earlier three cases out of New York, Florida, and Washington, D.C. So that makes this a unique concern for Georgia. Besides just those names, some jurors have had their faces, social media profiles, and even possible addresses and phone numbers shared online. And in at least a few cases, there are direct calls for Trump supporters to harass the people, hurt them, or worse. So now local, state, and federal investigators are hoping to track down the people making the threats. So far, none of the Georgia grand jurors have spoken publicly about the high-profile case, and the actual grand jury proceedings have been kept secret. So at this point, it's not clear exactly how they came to the decision to indict Trump and 18 of his allies on allegations that they schemed to overturn the 2020 election. But more information about the charges and Trump's defense is expected to come out at trial. Today, President Biden is hosting an unprecedented summit at the presidential retreat at Camp David. He'll be joined by the leaders of Japan and South Korea. And that's big, since even though they're considered America's strongest allies in East Asia, they've had a tense relationship with each other dating back more than a century. But there are hopes this meeting could be the start of something new. It's actually the first time the leaders of these three nations have ever met outside the context of a larger summit. It's also the first time Biden has invited any world leaders to the storied Camp David. 
Together, the three leaders are expected to announce details of a new alliance. And it comes as the countries face missile threats from North Korea and concerns over China's growing presence across the entire Asia-Pacific region. Already, China has denounced the summit as an effort to build a mini-NATO in Asia. And the White House is expecting more strong reactions after the fact from both China and North Korea. Still, American officials say they're hoping this will turn into a yearly gathering between the three leaders. We have much more news for you coming up. But first, I want to let you know about our sponsor, Nutrafol. Did you know that hair thinning will happen to about one in two women? Yeah, about half of women. So if it's something you've ever dealt with, you're not alone. It's actually normal. And Nutrafol helps women address it from within with science-backed supplements. As in, a clinical study showed 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplement for six months. No wonder it's actually the number one dermatologist-recommended hair growth supplement. In fact, my own dermatologist recommended it a while back. I was a few months postpartum, and all the hormone changes, stress, and whatever else was taking a toll on my hair. So I took Nutrafol postpartum and really noticed improved hair growth and just healthier, shinier hair. And there's a formula for everyone here, from postpartum to menopause to plant-based lifestyles and more. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L, Nutrafol.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code NEWSWORTHY. Vaccine makers Moderna and Pfizer say their new COVID-19 shots are performing well in early trials. And that's even against the latest dominant variant, Eris, and what's expected to be the next most common variant called Formax. The new Pfizer and Moderna shots are expected to roll out within weeks, assuming the FDA signs off. And then they should start going into Americans' arms by late next month or early October. Now, one thing to keep in mind next time you get a COVID shot, a new study found it actually matters which arm you choose to get the shot in. Researchers found people who get all their shots in the same arm have a stronger immune response than those who decide to switch between the left and right arms. The study authors say it's likely because the vaccines end up targeting the same lymph nodes, making them more active to produce the cells needed to fight off infections. Now scientists are planning to do more research with even more patients and with other vaccines outside of COVID-19. For a lot of Americans, buying a home right now is becoming even less affordable. Mortgage rates have jumped to their highest level in more than two decades. Mortgage giant Freddie Mac says the average interest rate on a 30-year fixed-rate home loan topped 7% this week. And that means mortgage rates have more than doubled in the last two years, as the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates in hopes of fighting inflation. And it means a lot of buyers are being priced out. So what happens next is up in the air. The central bank is set to make its next interest rate decision in about a month. Heads up before you turn on your dehumidifier. More than one and a half million of them are now under recall because they could spark fires. The recall impacts 42 models of dehumidifiers under five brand names, including GE and Kenmore. They were sold from January 2011 to February of 2013 at retailers like Walmart, Home Depot, Sam's Club, and others. But the Consumer Product Safety Commission says they can overheat, smoke, and catch fire. The manufacturer has received reports of hundreds of overheating incidents and about two dozen fires. Even though they were sold under different brands, the impacted models were all made in China by the Gree Appliance Company. So if you have one, the advice is to unplug it immediately and contact Gree for a refund. We have a link to the exact brands and model numbers in today's episode notes. This week, Snapchat's AI feature seemed to go rogue and creep a lot of people out. First, it posted its own story to the app, which is supposed to be a feature reserved just for the human users. It didn't show much, just a blank wall and a ceiling, though some people on social media mistook it for their own wall and ceiling. And after that, my AI stopped responding to messages. The next day, the phrase delete Snapchat was searched more than ever before on Google, increasing more than 1,200% worldwide. But eventually, Snap addressed the concerns by telling people my AI just experienced a glitch, and now everything is resolved. It looks like this year's Song of the Summer is a country hit that's actually been dominating the pop charts, too. Morgan Wallen's Last Night has been number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart for 16 weeks and counting. That makes it the longest number one run for any song that's not a collaboration. Overall, the only song to have been atop the Billboard Top 100 chart for longer was Old Town Road by Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus. 
As for Morgan Wallen's Last Night, it's also been atop Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart for 25 weeks and is now at the top of the Songs of the Summer chart, too. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel-good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Miracle Made. I love that feeling of getting into a clean bed. But it doesn't take long for traditional bed sheets to get kind of gross, sometimes even causing allergies or skin issues to get worse. Well, Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that, get this, requires three times less laundry. And that's because the sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth so they can stay fresh, giving you that clean smell and feeling longer. Plus, Miracle Sheets are super comfortable. There's a reason they're on my bed right now. Go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And if you order now, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo newsworthy at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash newsworthy and use that code newsworthy to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Feel Good Friday. Today, we're talking about a former New York City fashion designer who has found a new calling— Barbara Lakin takes old Barbie dolls that are either donated or bought from garage sales and restores them for migrant children. She sews new tiny couture outfits for the dolls, then dyes and styles their hair. Lakin is a volunteer with Team TLC NYC. The organization meets migrants who arrive in the city, gives them necessities and other forms of aid. And this spring, Team TLC NYC also opened up the Little Shop of Kindness. There, the new arrivals can shop for free, and young migrant children can get the refurbished Barbies. Lakin says it's hard for her to imagine what the kids have gone through, since most of them have traveled for months to get to the U.S. border and have usually fled some pretty bad situations at home. So she says, in those circumstances, it's especially important to have a toy for some sense of comfort. Now she's looking for more Barbies and dolls in a wider variety of shapes, sizes, and skin colors. For anyone who wants to donate to the Little Shop of Kindness, Team TLC NYC has set up an Amazon wish list, and we'll link to it in today's episode notes. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode all about the restart of student loan payments, including the impact on the economy and individuals. Then we'll be back Monday with your next news roundup. For now, thank you so much for listening and have a great weekend. 